Glory to God. All right, uh, we're talking about healings in the ministry of Jesus. We, we uh, shared this before, we'll share it again. Of the um, um, 32 healings recorded in the Gospels, um, 19 of them are, are, there's really 19 different ones. In other words, you might have like this one here, we got three different Gospels cover the same healing. Okay? All right? And so you might end up with, you know, there's 19 stories. But, and of the 19, 12 of them say that it was their faith. Okay? So we have, I think it's 31, 32 different recordings in the Gospels of a healing. But of those 32, there's 19 different ones. In other words, if, if they cover it Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that's the same healing. It may be counted as one of the 32, but when you remove the doubles, the double or triple entries, then you end up with 19 different healings recorded. And of those 19, 12 of them, Jesus gives credit to the faith of the per person, person, person receiving. <coughs> so, more than 50%. Okay? Nine and a half would be 50 percent. Well, as a 60 percent or so of the, of the ones recorded, the credit goes to the person's faith. Amen. Let's look here in Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 through 4. It says, And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy departed from him. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And then in Mark's gospel, chapter 1, verses 40 through 45, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion. See the difference? So there's a little extra here. Jesus is moved with compassion. So there's a little more light there. Put forth his hand, touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And uh, as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him. He was cleansed. He charged him and forth, uh, he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away and said unto him, saying, Thou nothing to no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and, <coughs> and offer for the, thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto him. But he went out, began to publish so much, and to blaze abroad the matters, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter the city, but was out in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. And then Luke 5, verses 12 through 14, it says, And it came to pass, when he was entered into a certain city, behold, man, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face, but saw him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. He put forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he charged him to tell no man, but go show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing, and according, to the, according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. So, we have one consistency here in the story is the man came to him and said, uh, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. So, here he is, and really this, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight for a little while. This is the place most believers are. Can God heal? Oh, yeah. You can go get people who don't believe you can lay hands on people and get them healed. They don't believe in the healing services. They don't believe in anointing with oil. They don't believe in any of that. They believe miracles passed away. Ask them, can God heal? Yeah. God can do anything. So it's never been, and listen, it's never been a question of can he. You can go to an atheist and say, can God heal? And they will say, well, if, it's, if, there, if there was a God, he'd be able to heal. Go to an agnostic. Well, I don't know if there's a God or not, but if there was a God, he could heal. Amen. That's not the question. It's never been the question of the ability of God to do something. The question always comes into, and we hear it in people's prayer. Prayers, a lot of times, Lord, if thou wilt. Lord, if you're willing. If it be thy will. Very interesting thing took place um, back in the uh, 
uh, mid part of the of the last century, uh, mid 1940s, 50s, sometime in that era, the Episcopal Church commissioned a, a a team to go out and study divine healing, and they went out in three for three years. They went out and studied the subject of divine healing in churches and practice, laying on of hands, different things. They went out and did all of those things. And they came back with this report. This is what they said to the, when they, made, when they, when they wrote the report on it, they, here's, here's, here's their synopsis to everything. We can no longer use, when praying for the sick, the faith-destroying phrase, if it be thy will. Wow. Well, how does that destroy faith? Because faith begins where the will of God is known. You, <clears throat> you can't have faith that God will save you if you don't know he's willing to save you. Yes. Not can he, will he. See, it's easy to come, Lord, Lord, if you, if you will, save me. I know you can, but will you? I know you can meet my financial need. But will you? See, so, so, and that is the place where faith has to, has, to, has to be released is not in the ability of God, but in the willingness of God. Amen. If you don't know that God will, how can you believe that he's going to? And so when we hear people pray, and this, this is not to be a knock on somebody, but let's understand where we are. If we're praying, if you pray, Lord, if it be thy will, then you don't know that it's his will. And you cannot have faith. You can have hope. You can really, really, and not Bible hope, because Bible hope actually expects something to happen. Worldly hope is wishing. You, know, you understand the difference? You wish it would happen. Somebody goes, buy that lottery ticket. They can't have faith they're going to win that lottery ticket, but they sure hope they do, or they're wishing they do. They don't have a true expectancy that they're going to. There's nothing to base that on. Especially when you look down and see, the chances of you winning this lottery is 1 in 135 million. Well, you really don't have a whole lot of expectancy you're going to be the one. You hope you are. Bobbleheads. You hope you're the one, but you really don't believe you're the one. Amen. Well, how many are here? How many, how many are here? There's three people who are not even here. Okay. <laughs> how many wish you were at home? All right. So the, the leper was in that same case. See, he knew that Jesus could. From the reports, everywhere he was going, people were getting healed. I mean, miracles were taking place. The noise being noised abroad all over the place. That this man from Galilee is going about, and people are getting healed. And he comes to him and says, now look, I know you can. That's not the question. The question out of his mouth was this, if thou wilt. Let me, let me kind of modernize that phraseology because we, we don't speak in Elizabethan. He said this, he said, I know you can, but are you willing? And Jesus put forth his hand and said, now, you know, this is in King James, I will. Really? He said this, I'm willing. Or let me give it to you even better. It's my will. Yeah. Well, how do you know it's his will? Because Jesus said, I only do those things which, things which I see my Father do. So we know it's the Father's will yeah. that that man be healed. Amen. So what did Jesus, Jesus address the thing that was keeping him from his miracle. He rid him of the question that he had, which was, are you willing? And see, there's a lot of people who pray a lot of times and they're asking God, they want to be healed. They want to be delivered. They want something good to happen in their life. And they're going to the Lord and saying, if you, Lord, you know, do this for me and do that for me, if it be your will. Now, what are they doing? They're throwing stuff out there hoping it'll stick to the wall. Because they don't know if God's willing to do that for them or not. Jesus removed that by saying, I will be thou cleansed. He had to address, see, he didn't, he didn't say, you know, Jesus didn't go, yeah, I can do it, man. I am anointed. 
Now, hadn't you heard uh, out of the, uh, out of the uh, um, Jerusalem Gazette how I raised up four people from the dead and cast out 35 devils, healed 25 paralytics last week? Man, I can do it. That's not what he said. I'm willing. It is the will. Remember Jesus said, said this, I came not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. So this means it's the will of God. Well, let's go back a little bit and let's think about how that God spoke and made this statement. He said there, remember when they, they've been sick and they, you know, so forth, he said, uh, none of the diseases come on you for I am Jehovah Rapha. Or the Lord thy physician, the Lord thy healer. God made it part of his covenant revelation to the children of Israel. He was the physician. He was the healer. Let me ask you a question. How is it we have such a hard time believing that God wants to do what he is? Now we all know this. What do sinners do? Sin. Why? It's their nature. You know, we go out and say, stop sinning, you God will save you. you know, God will save you so you can stop sinning. Why? Because you've got to change the nature. You know, Pentecostals, we were really bad about this. You know, you take off that jewelry and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. No, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And, you know, and if jewelry were really an issue, you would, you, would, you, know, you would be free from that. Like Brother Hagin told one person that came to you and said, I would, you know, I would get saved, but I don't, I, I don't want to quit dancing. He said, get saved, you can dance all you want to. They came back after they got saved and said, I see what you mean. He said, what? He said, they said, the want to's gone. You know, they love to go to clubs and dance socially and be, you know, just be a, a, a wild, crazy thing. But once they got saved, that the want to do that left. See, we, we tell them to quit dancing and quit going to the bars and come to church. God says, come to Jesus and you won't have to go to the bars. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The nature was changed. Now, in, in, in understanding that, what's God's nature? Well, what did Jesus tell Philip? Remember what Jesus told Philip? Anyone, anyone remember what Jesus told Philip? Remember Philip said to Jesus, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. In other words, it, it'll be good enough for us if you'll just show us the Father. And Jesus looked at him and said, have I been with you so long you hadn't figured this out? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Isn't that what he said? What did he mean by that? <clears throat> well, he goes over and when he gets into his great... Uh, dissertation in John 14 through 17, he reveals that because I've already quoted it to you. But he says, he said, I came not down from heaven to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. He said, the works that I do, there's the Father who's working in me. I don't do them myself, of them myself. They are the, it's the Father working in me. In other words, everything Jesus did was a representation of the will and the heart of God. Everything he did. Now, here's what I love. I love to challenge people. Go find somewhere where he put something on somebody. Where he killed them or made them sick. Because you've got people running around all the time. God made me sick. God put this on me. He teach me some kind of lesson. I, I found out where he was going around. The Bible says he went round about the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Amen. <clears throat> when you study the ministry of Jesus, he was teaching, preaching, and healing. Don't find anywhere that he was putting AIDS on them and putting cancer on them and then telling them to figure out what God's trying to tell them. If he is the representation, <clears throat> and in, in, in Hebrews said, the, the express image of his person. Hebrews chapter 1, if you're reading Hebrews chapter 1, it says there in Hebrews 1 that Jesus being the express image of his person. Jesus was an exact representation of the will of God. Hello. Now, number one, let's, let's think about the woman, uh, the woman, the, the, sire, the woman had the daughters uh, grievously vexed of a devil. Remember that? Let me see if I can find that here. In withered hand, the centenary servant, then the daughter of Jairus, woman with the issue of blood, two men, blah, blah. Syrophoenician woman's woman, woman's daughter. Um, Matthew 15, 21 says, Jesus went thence and departed from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. He answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but to those of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What's he talking about? Covenant. 
Now, let me tell you something. God honors covenant. That's not the only thing he honors. And she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered and said, it's not meat to take the children's bread covenant and cast it to dogs, people outside the covenant. She said, yeah, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's tables. And Jesus said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. He's a respecter of covenant and he's a respecter of faith. And thank God under the new covenant we got both. Amen. I said the believer can have, be in both, in covenant and have faith. The only time we get a hint in the New Testament of him turning someone away was a woman who was outside the covenant. Why? Because, because she didn't have a covenant, she had to approach it a different way. She had to get it by faith because she wasn't in the covenant. And so he, he put her to the test, basically. said, I'm not sent for you. You're outside the covenant. She said, yeah, I'm outside the covenant. But, you know, I can get a crumb. That's good enough for me. He said, your faith is great. You get it. Amen. So, so Jesus says this in this here. We understand this. He's what? He is the exact representation of the will of the Father. He tells us that God respects covenant and God respects faith. He don't accept whining. Hello? It's not Jesus' cheese factory. A little cheese go with your wine. Some, you know, come on, guys, laugh when I say stuff like that. <laughs> Even if you don't think it's funny. People on the Internet will think it's funny. <laughs> How to look. We're going to have a sign up here going, clap, laugh. <laughs> no, I better not do that. Bill will record it. <laughs> Just can't trust these cameramen, cameramen anymore. Hallelujah, put Saturday Night Fever dancing on there and everything. <laughs> the Lord has a sense of humor. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. All righty. <clears throat> so, the, the, the leper came to Jesus, and he didn't know what God's will was. Now, let me say something here, church. You have no excuse. We have the Bible. It tells us of the ministry of Jesus. Jesus, his own testimony is, I am a representation of the will of God. I am a representation. Now, this is paraphrasing a little bit, but that's what it says. He, you know, he didn't see me, he seen the Father. The works that I do, the Father, he doeth them in me. I do them not in myself. Amen. I only do those things which I see my Father do. Amen. So then Jesus is telling us by his own testimony, I'm a, a, I represent the will of the Father. And God had already under the old, think about this now. Under the old covenant, God had already revealed himself, revealed himself in covenant with Israel as Jehovah hyphen Rapha compound covenant name, the self-revelation and continuing revelation of God through the compound names. Remember the Jehovah are the, the, really the four letters, Y-H-W-H, -H, okay, that we've added letters to the Germans in, in doing in back in the mid-1200, mid somewhere in that era, you know, decided because they used the J and put vowels in it and made it Jehovah. Um, others have come back later and taken the letters and put vowels in there with Y-H-W-H and made it Yahweh. It's the same, comes from the same four letters in the Bible. So if you see Jehovah or you see Lord in little caps or you see somebody, you hear somebody going, he's Yahweh, you hear somebody else going, he's Jehovah, comes from the same four letters. It's just a different way of the different era or whatever that they actually created so you could say it. Now, people call it the unpronounceable name of God. I had to believe it was pronounceable at one time. Yeah. Well, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, shall we say. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. They, but they, they, wouldn't even, they wouldn't even say his name. When they were transcribed, when they got to there, they would write it, they would get up and go wash their hands and cleanse themselves because his name was so holy. Man, what, what a difference in the mindset than we are today. <laughs> They would go clothe, bathe and cleanse themselves because they had written the name of the Lord. It was so holy. Amen? So anyway, but Jehovah or Yahweh, 
Uh, the, God revealed himself as Jehovah or Yahweh, meaning the self-existent God, the God who reveals himself. You know, and really, you go really a little bit deeper and, and paraphrase, or not paraphrasing, but transliterating that, meaning uh, the, the, um, the God who keeps covenant, the covenant-keeping God. Well, then he came back afterwards, and over, over the years, he would, he would uh, reveal himself, like with Abraham at the altar. Amen. Remember that? Jehovah Jireh, when, when he provided the lamb for Isaac. They called the, place, the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is our provider, the Lord is our provision. Okay, but the very first one he did was was not peace, was not righteousness, was not uh, victory, was not um, provision. The very first compound covenant name we have after the the name Jehovah or Yahweh or Y H W H is revealed is found in Exodus, where God says, "I'm Jehovah Rapha, the Lord thy physician, or the God that healeth thee." I find it interesting that the very why? 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 Because man's a triune being. See, God would be their salvation of their spirit. It'd also be their healer of their bodies. God wants your body well. You go through look through the Bible over and over and over again. There are places where um, healing and spiritual salvation go hand in hand. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me. Bless his holy name and forget not all his benefits. Amen? And who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Right there together. You go over to 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. You get some dingle brains coming along going, well, you know, that's talking about spiritual healing. Is that right? Then why? When we get over Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, and then when the Eden's come, they brought in many that were sick, and he healed them all, and cast out the spirits with his word, that it might be fulfilled by that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Didn't have a thing to do with spiritual healing. That it might be fulfilled, that it might fulfill that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He makes it very clear. Matthew 8, 16 and 17 makes it very clear that Isaiah 53 then quoted by Peter in 1 Peter 2, 24, I, Matthew 8, 16, and 17 makes it very clear he's making reference to physical diseases and ailments. This is my quote, the spiritual healing. You want spiritual healing? It's physical, sicknesses, diseases. People, now people just make stuff up or they, they manipulate stuff or they get real spirit. I mean, just because somebody puts on a voice that says, God, the Holy Spirit. Don't make it real. Hello? You don't talk like that. I don't talk like that. I don't come along and go, and God said. And then get out of the pulpit and start talking. Hey, did you see the game today? God. People play all, kind of, all kinds of shows or whatever, and oh, they must be know what they're talking about. They use God, they say God funny. Come on now. Just because someone says that it means spiritual, prove it. I can prove to you that it was physical from the Bible. Direct quotes. Not, not me kind of put, well, kind of, I mean direct passage quotes and the interpretation given by the writers of the Bible. So you don't have to take my interpretation. Amen? So, what, what are we saying? In order for healing to work, and you to be able to receive healing, you have to know it's God's will to heal. Just as, in order for you to be saved, you have to know it's His will to save. Why do we preach Jesus, you know, the, the Bible, you know, Romans, uh, the Bible tells you, you know, and, you know, gives you the Romans roadmap, and then we preach Acts where it says, you know, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul writes, it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God's raised it from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. <clears throat> Why do we keep preaching that? So people will know what? It's the will of what? Whosoever, with whosoever. God's will to save you. Amen? It's God's will to save you. We keep preaching that in our churches, we keep preaching that in our churches, and we keep preaching that in our churches for the very reason we want people to know it's God's will to save them. 
Why? Because we know if we can get them to believe God is willing to save them, they already know he can. I'm talking about being born again. They already know God can, but you know, they look at their lives and say, I'm such a rotten sinner, I'm this, I'm that, and then we, we, we find whosoever will. I'll cleanse your unrighteousness. I'll remove your iniquities as far as the east is from the earth. We preach all kinds of scriptures that show them that God loves you and God, and even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, Ephesians. Chapter 2. Amen? Even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he quickened us together and made us alive. Amen? And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We let people know it doesn't matter. God loves you. God will save you. God wants to save you. It's his will to save you. You have songs, you know. I mean, every Billy Graham meeting that's ever been held, just as I, I see, just as I am without one plea. How's that guy? Can you help, help me out there? I can't remember how it goes. I don't understand. Just as I am. Huh? That thy blood was shed for me. Thou bidst me come to thee. O Lamb of God. I come. Amen? Just as I am. We get people to believe just as you are. Here we go. Just, without one plea. Yeah, I can't even get the tune in my head right. Hallelujah. Just as I am. Without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, that thou bidst me come to the old Lamb of God, I come, I come. Singing that over and over every, every time. <clears throat> Why? Because people need to know it's God's will. I can come just like I am. Yeah. Amen? God will clean me up. Amen? What is it? You catch them, God will clean them and skin them. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? My father-in-law had that, had, had that mindset. He'd go fish with nets. He'd put them out and go, and go sit under the tree all day and sit there and then go back in the afternoon and, and pull the nets in and then take, you know, coolers full home Miss Glitzen and say, I've done what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> she had to go out and clean them. And then can them. He had so many fish, they'd have to can fish. And some people like, actually we were talking about this just the other day, canned fish are better because uh, the little bones in them break down. You don't even have to worry about them. The little, those little skinny bones that you're always concerned about when you're eating fish, when you can them, you don't have to, you don't have to they just, they, they fall apart. So you can make fish cakes. And all. Now, this is all observation because I don't do it. <laughs> I'm not a fish person, fish cake person, can you, pretty much just not a fishy person. All right. Aren't you glad no, I'm not fishy? Now, understanding that we keep preaching salvation to people because we, if they know the will of God, they can respond to it. Th this leper came to Jesus not knowing what his will was. Do he could, but he just, he didn't know what he, what he would he? What is his will? And Jesus erased it and said, I will, I will, be thou made clean. And immediately, 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 his leprosy departed from him. Why? Because he addressed the thing that was keeping him out of the answer he needed. He was only in hope. He came to Jesus in hope, really wishing, man, I know you can, but I sure wish you would. If thou wilt. If you're willing, you can. Jesus said, I'm willing, be made. If we could get the church to come to the place where we're going, I know you can and I know you're willing, we get a lot more done. When you come to God, instead of going, I wish, you're going, I know you will. Because you said so in your word. Now, that's where we have to go back to finding out from the word what God said and believing from the word what God said. Can you say amen? Being, believing the word. Amen. Remember, remember the, uh, the, the, the uh, man, Jesus came down the mountain, a mountain of prayer, a time of prayer, and the man came to him and said, you know, I, my son's over here, he's got a devil, he's casting me to the fire, your disciples. I took him to your disciples, they couldn't cast him out. And Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. But, and, and then the man said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Like one guy said, and what he said there was, Lord, my, I believe in my heart, my head's giving me a fit. 
You ever, listen, you, we're not talking faith isn't of the head, it's of the heart. You know that God said he will. You believe that and you act on that. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen?